Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and this is tutorial number 47. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk to you guys about checkboxes and radio buttons. Now, most of you guys probably already know what a checkbox is. Um, it's just one of those boxes that you click on it and it's checked and if you click on it again, it's unchecked, okay? Uh, so quite simple and a radio button pretty much works uh, the exact same way except that a radio button um, can only have one uh, of the options selected whereas a checkbox could have many options selected and we'll get into that um, later on in the tutorial but for now um, let's actually put some checkboxes on our page so we're gonna have to ask the user a question and it could be a question that requires multiple answers or um, multiple choices so let's say um, I ask the user, what are you most likely to do in your spare time? So what do you do in your uh, spare time? Okay, and we could give them a couple options. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going to put a break tag there just for display purposes. Um, but we can give them a few different options. So we can uh, say play sport. Okay. And that can be a checkbox. So to add a checkbox onto our page, we're going to add an input with a type equal to checkbox. And this will make sure that our input element is actually rendered as a checkbox. Uh, then as usual, we have to give our checkbox a name. So I'm going to give this a name of um, I don't know spare time so we'll go spare underscore time and the reason why we give every checkbox a name is because whenever we're sending these values back to our server then we want to send through a name to identify the value that was checked and in the case of a checkbox we might often send through more than one so you might very often, uh, especially in the case with PHP, see people give their checkboxes a name uh, that actually has little square brackets here on the end. And that's got to do with programming. So I'm not really going to cover that um, here, but you might actually see that happen sometimes. So just, you know, take note of that. So we'll send through a um, value of we'll send through a name of spare time but what do we want to send through as a value well of course the value um, we're gonna put in as an attribute and the value is basically what we're gonna send as um, programmers or as uh, designers uh, back to the server because the user gets to see this part they get to see that they're taking the option for playing sport but we get to decide on our end uh, actually what value we want to send back. So this is a little bit different to uh, a text box, whereas uh, you guys can remember a value for a text box actually um, determined what was going to be displayed inside of that text box. Uh, so this is a little bit different to that. And we'll just give this a value of uh, sport. Okay. And we could probably end this off right there. So uh, that is one option. Let's go ahead and make a few more. So we can say play sport. We can also say play uh, computer games or something. And the last option, uh, just something kind of girly. We'll say shopping. Okay. Um, and then we'll send this as games and this as shopping so we're just changing these values now if we were gonna send all of these back to the server like this we might want to give each one a different name uh, otherwise we'd be doing something like this we would use the same name but we would put in those square parentheses uh, and this basically all det is determined by whatever server-side scripting language you're using, whether it be PHP or Python or something like that. So uh, it also depends on what the programmer would like these names to be. So you might want to just uh, find out from him whenever you're actually naming your 
uh, elements. Yeah, kind of, kind of hit a blank there. I didn't know what I was saying. But anyways, um, let's go ahead now and save this and actually take a look at what this looks like in the browser. Um, so we've got to go over there and just run this in Firefox. And as you can see, we now have a question for the user. So what do you do in your spare time? And they can tick uh, play sport, play computer games or shopping. And as you can see, we're able to select uh, multiple checkboxes. We could just send through two uh, or one, or we could send through all three and that would be fine. Okay. Um, and the user could actually choose to send through no values at all. But we might decide that we want something to be checked by default. So whenever you want an option to be checked by default, you can add in this attribute which is checked and you can just set that equal to uh, checked and this will basically um, tell HTML or tell the browser okay this uh, option needs to be uh, checked by default so um, it won't actually work if I just refresh this I'm gonna have to run it in Firefox anew and as you can see whenever the user actually first loads this page they're going to have play sport um, ticked by default. Okay, so uh, now that we've <laughs> talked about checkboxes for so long, it's time to actually move on to radio buttons. And I don't think I'm going to delete all of this code. We'll leave that there uh, as it is. But we'll add in, I think, two break tags over here. So maybe just uh, highlight this and hit Control D, and that's going to duplicate it once. And that means we should at least have a little bit of space between our checkboxes and our radio buttons. Now, radio buttons can only have one option ticked at a time or checked at a time. So whenever we group radio buttons together, we have to give them the same name because that's how the browser knows that they're all part of one group. And it also, that's how the browser knows that only one of those items is supposed to be checked. Okay, so let's give um, our radio or let's put some radio buttons on the page. And in order to do that, let's just ask a yes, no question. So do you uh, play League of Legends? And that's pretty much my go to question whenever I talk about radio buttons. It's kind of funny. Um, in this in my PHP tutorial, I did that as well. So uh, yeah, okay. And we're going to give the user the option to say they do play League of Legends, so yes. And just for display purposes, we need to add a break tag there. And I'm going to give an, or I'm going to put in an input element over here of type equal to radio. And that is going to make this actual input element a radio button. And then we're going to give that a name and we're going to set that equal to uh, plays lol um, just uh, because <laughs> that's the first thing that came to mind I guess and um, then I'm gonna give this a value of uh, yes so <laughs> um, keep in mind that this works exactly the same as a checkbox that we decide what value we want to send through to the server um, so whenever the user ticks this option, then we know that we're going to send through the value yes, because the user can see this word over here, yes. Okay, so they do indeed trust that they're sending through the value yes. And it's going to send through with a name of plays lol. Now, we obviously also want to give them an option to say no, and we're going to change the value to no. But make sure that the name is the same because if you guys give each one of these radio buttons a different name, then it's not going to group them in the form and you might be able to select more than one at a time. And radio buttons are meant to only have one ticked. So let's go back here and click refresh. And as you can see, we've got our second question over here. Do you play League of Legends? And the user can either tick yes or they can tick no, but as soon as we tick no, then yes is not checked. And as soon as we tick yes, 
then no is not checked. So we can only have one of these uh, selected at a time. And again, if you want one of those uh, selected by default whenever the user browses um, your website or whenever they first visit your website, then you can just add in this attribute here, which is checked is equal to checked. And that will just make sure that by default, whenever the user first uh, loads this page in their browser, that yes is actually checked. And you know, if I want to be 100% accurate, I should actually run that in Firefox again. So there we go. And uh, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like, or share this video. It's really going to help my channel grow. And I will see you guys in the next one.